Hello there! It looks like we're nearing the end of the series. We'll have this chapter to go over, and the next chapter will be the conclusion. For this chapter, we'll be delving into even more speculation and conjecture as this hasn't been fully explained in the canon as of yet. That being, what were possible roles the Jedi Temple guards could have taken up outside of just defending the Jedi Temple? In Star Wars Rebels, the Jedi Temple guards made an on-screen appearance for the first time in two years since their last appearance in the Clone Wars series. But they are not in their traditional robes, instead, they are in light form-fitting attire along with their traditional mask. It might be that these are training uniforms used by the Jedi Temple guards. When Kanan Jarrus had his force vision while in the Jedi Temple on Lothal, he entered a room that looks like a dojo. It's very Japanese in appearance with the use of wood panelings, white walls, and wall scrolls. This initially led me to believe that this was a training or sparring room of sorts. Then I ran into this image in the Forces of Destiny, Padme and Ahsoka comic. Ahsoka Tano and Barriss Afi were sparring in a room found within the Coruscant Jedi Temple. What this tells us is that the room Kanan saw in his vision was indeed a real place and was likely a room Kanan was familiar with as a Padawan as he would have been training there either with his master, Depa Bilaba, or with other Jedi Padawans. It has the same layout, the same wall scrolls, the lightsaber racks on the walls, it's a perfect match. Perhaps the Force vision Kanan had showed him a room he knew so he would be more comfortable with the situation he was in. With this in mind, I believe this shows us that the uniforms the Temple Guards were wearing in the Vision were training uniforms as they were in a training room. These robes would be more ideal for training situations as they would grant greater movement and flexibility than the standard Jedi Temple Guard robes. This could lead one to wonder why they had training uniforms. There are several possibilities. The Temple Guards use these uniforms to train with each other, retaining their anonymity. The Temple Guards could have trained with other Jedi and Padawans to help them own their skills. They use these uniforms during rites of passage to determine if a Padawan is ready to become a Jedi Knight, not unlike how the Temple Guards of the Force Vision granted knighthood to Kanan Jarrus. Now we must delve into the Legends continuity to proceed with the information to follow. In Knights of the Old Republic 2, it's mentioned how Malachor V was the site of the final battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The planet contained a superweapon, the Mass Shadow Generator, made by the scientist Bao Dur under the orders of Revan. The superweapon was activated, fracturing the planet and decimating both Republic and Mandalorian fleets that were fighting above the planet's orbit. The few ships remaining were pulled from orbit into the remains of the planet due to the increased gravity caused by the mass shadow generator. The superweapon would then be activated again remotely, which would destroy what remained of the planet. However, with the new kind of continuity, Malachor V appears to be known as Malachor, and the planet is still intact. Malachor appears to be the location of an event called the Great Scourge of Malachor, in which the Jedi and Sith were in a heated battle. Throughout the site of the battle, there were only petrified remains of those who fought there, both Jedi and Sith forever stuck in the poses they were in at the moment of their deaths. This is eerily reminiscent of the bodies found at Pompeii, which could lead one to believe that there was a great energy wave that was so hot it killed the entire planet while petrifying everyone on it. Access to this planet has been restricted under the rule of the Republic and through the wishes of the Jedi Order. Any knowledge of Malachor was erased from the Jedi archives in an attempt to hide any Sith secrets that might be there. If Knights of the Old Republic 2 is any indication for the time frame of when this event occurred, then it would have been approximately 3,000 to 4,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. The reason there was a great battle here is that a Sith Lord was constructing a superweapon that was capable of both killing entire planets using dark side energies, as well as being capable of hyperspace travel. This would pose a threat to all life and the Republic, so the Jedi invaded the planet to capture and disable the superweapon. Hundreds, if not thousands of Jedi and Sith died here. Until we get more information about the events of Malachor, we can assume that the Jedi were winning, and in a last ditch effort to strike a massive blow to the Jedi, the superweapon was activated. The activation of the superweapon killed and petrified all life on the planet, including all the Jedi and Sith. Now, what does any of this have to do with Jedi Temple Guards? Well, Temple Guards fought in the battle. We know that the Jedi Temple Guards were on Malachor when Kanan Jarrus was blinded by Maul's lightsaber. The now blind Kanan was on the floor searching for his lightsaber. Not only did he find his lightsaber, but he found a Jedi Temple Guard mask from one of the petrified remains, which he then donned. Why is this significant? Let's take a look at the Malachor superweapon. Take a good look at the scene, how vast the area is, all of which had a battle going on throughout the scourge of Malachor. Now let's observe the scene where Kanan is blinded by Maul. However, I want you to focus on the background. They're in front of some glowing red rune of sorts. Now let's take a good look at the Malachor Temple. We can find this glowing rune towards the top of the Sith Temple. So what can we deduce from this information? 
This shows us that the Jedi Temple Guards have exceptional combat skills in order to not only travel across all that area of land amidst the heat of battle, but to also travel to a point near the top of the pyramid where the leader of the Sith Temple likely was before she activated the super weapon. This makes sense if you consider the fact that the Jedi Battlemaster single-handedly chooses who joins the ranks of the Temple Guards, and it seems they recruit the best of the best. I believe the Temple Guards were acting as defense and support for a Jedi Strike Team that sought to cut off the head of the Sith leadership. Perhaps they were escorting members of the Jedi Council during the battle? This indicates that during times of cataclysmic danger, the Jedi Temple Guards can be removed from their temple duties and will be placed with the lead Jedi as either part of the strike team or backup for a strike team. Unfortunately, this was a battle in which everyone lost. We cannot learn further from here as we lacked information for this event. I dreamt of Malakor. I remember the ships, the last stand of the Republic, the tattered remnants of our fleet the largest we could gather, but it was damaged, weakened, and vulnerable. The Mandalorians couldn't resist, they tore into us like beasts, shredding our ships to scrap as we fought back. Yet this time there were no reinforcements for either side. Revan had been delayed out system by Mandalorian scout ships. By the time he arrived, it was too late, and beyond Malakor there were no more Mandalorians left to die. I remember standing on the bridge with you and watching the destruction of the Republic, watching ships full of soldiers and Jedi burn and die. I remember the look you had when you turned to me. It was the longest you'd ever looked at me. You didn't say anything, just a nod. Events moved quickly then, even in my dreams. Flashes, explosions, you falling. I could feel the pain around me. And then the memory, the drifting hulks of the Mandalorian ships, the dead, allies, friends, strangers. And then the echo, lingering, the sound I awakened to in my nightmares. It was nothing more than a slaughter, 